Hello guys, today we'll have another junior code review. Review of the code submitted by one of you guys from my audience. I received this email asking to review a Laravel project, my first serious Laravel project by a person who learned Laravel a few months ago. And this project is built on Laravel, Inertia and React. In this video, I won't talk about Inertia or React part. I will comment only on Laravel part and that in itself is enough for a dozen of tips or things I found. And in this video, we will talk about grouping the routes, collection methods, structuring the controllers, models and services in a different way and a few minor tips here and there. The repository is public on GitHub and I will link that in the description below. It was for a game for Cryptic Hunt organized by students. And this is the website for cryptichunt.com. Locally, I was able to set it up, but the same as online, I saw the leaderboard because actually the treasure hunt is over and I see only the leaderboard. So I didn't experience the game itself, but I looked at the code and let's see what I have to comment, how to make this code better, or in some cases, congratulate that person on writing some good pieces of code. I start every code review and every analysis of a new project from the routes. So we open routes web and we see this. First thing I see, what is middleware DQ? And this is the comment about naming things. So maybe you're a solo developer for that project, but if you want to show that code to someone else, maybe your team will expand or maybe show it to me as a reviewer. What is DQ? Name things properly. I had to go to app HTTP kernel file where all middlewares are listed and I found DQ and found that, oh, it is disqualified. It doesn't really matter what is inside of that middleware of disqualified. It just checks actually whether user is disqualified or not. But my point is this should be called disqualified and used all over routes web here. So don't shorten names of variables or middlewares or classes just for saving a few symbols here and there. Same here, even route DQ with DQ should be disqualified. Next, talking about middlewares, I see that all over that routes file, there's a middleware here, middleware there. So sometimes it's guest, sometimes it is DQ, sometimes it is auth and it's all over the place and I would introduce route grouping here. So what is under middleware auth? I would do route group and then list the auth group here. Also there's admin, so slash admin notifications, admin short links, admin users, admin everything. So I would create a route group with prefix admin of URL, with middleware admin and even controllers. I would move user controller and other admin controllers, which is short link controller, notification controller, I would move into app HTTP controllers admin in their own namespace. Because now if we open app HTTP controllers, it's not too many controllers, I admit, but still it's pretty nice to have admin separation of admin area, full admin area from user area. And it comes from routes, then middleware, then namespaces and the controllers and the views actually as well. So all in all routes is okay, but I would group into various groups and maybe introduce some route resources here and there, I'm not sure. So for example, this admin tiles, admin tiles with tile, get and post, it does look like a route resource to me. Or maybe it could be made into a route resource with a few changes. And then if we scroll down at the very end, I wanted to show you this thing. It kind of made me smile because I remembered in my first projects in teenage years, I was doing something around the same, but even worse. I was doing something around the same. So if I wanted to get some data, I was doing that by if user something, then DD something, or there wasn't DD at the time, it was print R or var dump or something with PHP. I confess I did it even worse. I didn't check for local environment or something. I was checking the IP address. So I was doing if dollar underscore server remote address is my own IP, then I dump something just for debugging. Of course, I was doing that temporarily for debugging and then was deleting those lines, but still it just remind me a flashback like 20 years back. In this case, there's a specific route for local environment to DD everything about specific user who is logged in. And also it's protected by auth, so it's kind of safe, but I guess there should be some kind of page in admin area to look at the user instead of doing this. Next thing I wanted to show you is a middleware which forced the home page to be automatically redirected to that leaderboard static. And it's a pretty cool solution actually. In the kernel file of middlewares, there is a middleware which is assigned to all the lists. So here are the middlewares which are executed for all the requests. And one of those middlewares is static leaderboard. And inside 
we find we have admin in the request, login in the request, leaderboard, or if it's not the end of time, which is configurable in the environment, then we pass it on. So we allow the request to happen. Otherwise, in my local case, the tournament has ended, so I was automatically redirected to the route. Pretty elegant solution, I would say. Next thing I wanted to show you is a function that should not be where it is, should not be in the controller. A thing that I found here by browsing the code, index controller returns the show with inertia. And again, we won't stop on the inertia in this video. In the description below, you will find a video where I overview the inertia for those who haven't started that at all. For now, we're focusing on Laravel. And in here, one of the parameters of notification is calling another controller with format notifications. And that method is calling the database to get the notifications, whatever that notification is. So that function should not be in the controller. Ideally, controllers should have only the functions which correspond to the routes in routes web or routes API. And this format notifications is also used inside of the same notifications controller to get the notifications for the admin. So I would do some kind of a service class or move that to notification model maybe. Probably service is the best, that's how I do things. If there's some kind of a function list related to some model, I create app services that would be, for example, notification service with function for now, one function format notifications. Maybe in the future there would be more functions inside of that service. So controllers should not be responsible for getting the data and pass them to another controller, which in this case is index controller. Next thing I wanted to show you is a few cool usages of collections inside of this repository. So you can take a look at more of them in the public repository. I will link that in the description below as well. And here's one of the examples, leaderboard controller, getting the data of users and then mapping the data. So collection method and returning exactly the array that you need in the structure that you need for inertia rendering. Of course, here immediately I dislike this DQ again. And also, why is it not a variable? So here we have users as a variable and here it is loaded in line. So maybe because it's shorter, like four lines instead of like 12 lines, maybe. But it's also kind of a thing I don't like. I like the consistency and the pattern. So I think this should be a variable like disqualified user, something like that. Another few examples of collections is in the user model down below. We have, for example, points history and it has user tiles with where it has so eloquent part. So get and then the collections take over the work. So filtering and then mapping and then to array. Another example of that is recalibrate points, which calls the same points history from the above, turns that into collection and then calling reduce on that collection. So those collection methods allow you to have kind of one liners or chains of methods if you want to perform a few transformations on the data. Next thing, we are not running away from this user model because I would like to question where those functions should belong. So user model is partly for relationships like tile belong to, like cast, so everything around eloquent as normal, fillable fields, cool. But then the methods are like can back, can next, then previous tile, next tile, some more logic with, again, relationships, a few relationship, but then we have user tile, then we have relationship again, then we have record attempt, then we have submit side quest, whatever that means, mark solved. So my point is that user model should not be responsible for all of that. Model is mostly about defining the fields, the relationships, maybe a few attributes here and there, but those actions around user model should be somewhere else. Again, I would probably create some kind of a user service and call those functions from there instead of having that all in the model, because that model is even hard to read. So if you want to find some relationship, you need to actually scroll up and down like attempts or I don't even remember where those others were. Yep, tiles and user tiles. So personally, my preference is to leave eloquent stuff with the model and every other action should be somewhere else like in the service. Next, a few things around register controller that I've noticed. So config get, quite a lot of things are simplified in Laravel by helpers. So config get is actually simpler with just config. So you can just call the config instead of doing config get. And then on top, you don't need to load config here. So that could be removed. Then going through register controller, another kind of small but important thing, I don't recommend to use request all. I have a separate video around that and I will link that in the description below. Instead of request all, it should be probably in most cases request validated. 
but that's if you use form requests or you do validate it here, for example, and then you can do validate it like this as a variable because request all allows someone to pass more fields which are not the part of your form and it's kind of a security issue potentially and again watch the video in the description below next a few things i've noticed in the store method of notification controller i don't really like that and there are a few reasons first even php storm kind of underlines this part or blurs out this part because this variable isn't actually used so why calling the helper if you do have that request here so it should be dollar request instead of that so that's one then if you have only one field of content and it is invalidated you can do it much shorter first in the notification you pass in as fillable so content here should be here and then you can do notification create data that's it so instead of those three lines because data again is the validated part similar to what i've shown you just a minute ago and then it is automatically assigned to the content like this. So in this case, it saved like three lines of code, but if you have model with bigger amount of fields, it would save like massive amount of lines. Next thing I wanted to emphasize is why creating temporary variables or temporary functions where it's not really needed. So for example, links equals something and then return links. Why not following the PHP storm advice, a necessary local variable, inline variable like this. Of course, you can do it manually, but PHP Storm did it for me. Maybe a few things to reformat that. So no need to have a variable. And even here that this links function, again, it should not be in the controller because it's not a public function corresponding to any route. It's just to get the data. So it is used down below here in this links. And why do you need the function just for that? Why don't you do directly, immediately, instead of this links, like this? Of course, it should not be on the same line. So something like this but still then you don't need any links here like this yeah probably the formatting should be this way but you get the idea so i removed one variable and then one method and i've checked it's not used anywhere else in the project next in one of the controllers i've noticed this if statement which could be shortened so maybe not all of you know ternary operator or use it so if you have if this then that and the value of some variable depends on that if statement result you can do it like this so if tile solution equals this so this is the condition then body solution otherwise no something like this so this would be one line and then tile points would be the same so body points or no so two lines instead of seven lines not in all cases that ternary operator is beneficial. So for example, if you have more variables, maybe this condition should be even moved somewhere else. Again, maybe in the service, but you get the idea how to shorten your code somewhat with ternary operator, this question mark. Next, I want to show you how to quickly create a record if it doesn't exist in the Eloquent. And in that repository, I found this code. So user tile where, and there's a function not first, but first or, and then inside you can have callback function, which would return whatever else should happen if that is not found. And that would replace an if statement. So you would do user tile first. If it doesn't exist, you would create that and return it. So that's a more elegant way to do that in one eloquent statement. And there's even a shorter way I've written that code and let's uncomment it. There's a first or create function. And a better way to explain it is official Laravel documentation, eloquent documentation, this one. So flight first or create, retrieve the flight by name, which is the first array condition, or create it with the same condition. And in addition, add those two. So if we return to our case, we are checking if those two are met. If yes, then it is returned. Otherwise, we create the record with those two, additionally adding IP and then returning it. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say about this repository. You can take a look at that yourself. It's public. You can dive deeper into Inertia or React.js, which is inside of that repository. And if you have any comments about anything I've said in this video, shoot in the comments below. Currently, I have a few more code reviews on my schedule in upcoming weeks. So subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified when new video is released. And see you guys in other videos.